So now coming to some rapid fire questions. First is, okay. uh, is CP necessary nowadays for clearing the online assessment or not? I think CP uh, gives you an edge in interviews and OS both. I didn't do much CP, uh, but I think uh, CP is not mandatory also, but I think doing CP is always good. So as you applied with referral, can you provide the referral template like uh, how students should approach the recruiters? The referral template I used, uh, I start off with my introduction that I'm, my name is this, I'm from this college. And I added a few points, one, two points about uh, that I have uh, practiced problems and I have made projects and I have a hackathon and all that thing. Hey everyone, welcome Anvesha. She has recently cracked an internship in Microsoft and she is from tier two college. Today she'll guide you how she got the internship, what achievements she wrote and how she got a resume shortlisted in the off campus opportunity. So watch the video till the end because she is having a good consistency on lead code, a very high rating on lead code and she is also a Azure certificate. So Anvesha, let's start this video with your introduction. Mm -hmm. Hi, Pasnari. Thank you for having me here. Um, my name is Ambesha Shrivastav. I'm pursuing uh, BTEC and CSC from JIIT Noida. Congratulations, Anvesha, for getting the internship. So coming back to your college days, like you're from tier two college, how you started DSA? What was your motivation behind doing the DSA and how you maintained the consistency on lead code? What all resources you use for DSA? Okay, so my DSC journey started from scratch uh, with no prior coding background. Um, initially, uh, understanding and building the concepts were quite challenging. Um, I started with uh, uh, Striver's video, Love Bubble. I, I used to uh, kind of uh, uh, explore very much. I uh, started with Striver, Love Bubble, um, Aditya, uh, Verma, a lot of people I started with. Uh, the then I finally uh, got to know about Cyber's A to Z sheet, and then I consistently followed that sheet. And uh, Lead Code became my go-to platform for practice, and I used to give regular contests on Lead Code. Okay, so continuously doing the Lead Code contest, Lead Code, and doing the Striver sheet helped you in getting the internship. This is all about yes, resources. Absolutely helped me. Yes, that was all about the resources I used, and for uh, the core subjects, I used Love Bubbles videos for oops os dvms computer networks i used his videos okay so now moving to your projects like you applied in off campus way like they opened the job portal and you applied so what all projects yes. were there in your resume which like you feel they made you selected in that um, so i included three projects in my resume uh, the first project was a real estate website um, i initially made a real estate website and then i realized that it is a very common topic so i include i integrated a real time chat application with it in order to make it a bit uh, unique um, so the tech stack involved in this project was monstack and socket.io and websockets so this was the tech stack for this project uh, the other project i added was a stock market prediction model that uh, include uh, deep learning and LSCM model. And the third project I included, uh, it had the text of, of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and uh, MySQL, PHP. This project uh, was a hackathon project, and it was a group project. I added it in order to uh, show my uh, that I have worked in group as well. And, um, and the idea was a bit unique, so that's why I uh, included this in my project. Did you get your resume reviewed also? Like by some senior. Yes, I, yes, I, I actually used uh, resume worded a lot. I have given a lot of focus on my ATS score as well. Also, I uh, had reviewed my resume by two, three of my seniors as well. And when they said that this resume is fine, then only I submitted that resume. Okay. So, yeah, and I also used to keep a regular check on my ATS score. So, as far as I remember, you also participated in Google internship process. And after first yes. or second interview, you face the reje rejection. So after the last uh, round, I faced the okay. rejection there. Yeah. So like uh, before applying to Microsoft, what were the low points in your journey and how you manage them? Um, the toughest part, I would say, was starting off um, in my first year, I would say, because uh, 
most people around me had a prior computer science background they had done coding uh, in previously and i had zero coding knowledge i wasn't even aware of how do we start coding what are c c++ languages so and watching people around me having so much information knowledge about that was a quite demotivating at times um, however i started working hard i think that was a bit demotivating at times but it gave me a lot of motivation to start off i had two three friends of mine with whom i used to start going to the library and uh, i started off my coding journey by then so that was the lowest point Re getting rejected from google uh, was very disheartening um, actually i was expecting uh, a positive result um, and it wasn't that way it, still i wasn't that demotivated i thought that uh, okay no problem uh, i was a bit upset but i thought i'll uh, make other things work so toughest point was to start off okay so now coming to applying in microsoft so you applied via the hmm. portal and the off campus way so what yeah. all you uploaded yes. like your mark sheets or something um they asked me for transcripts i uh, applied my resume uh, with a referral uh, they asked for transcripts so i have added my transcripts i used cover letter as well Uh, which was optional, but I uh, included my cover letter. Uh, this was all they asked uh, to apply. So, so you applied with the reference, and I had my resume. Yes, I applied with the reference. So, as you applied with the reference, can you provide the reference template, like uh, how students should approach the recruiters? The reference template I used. Uh, I start off with my introduction that I am. My name is this. I'm from this college. and i added a few points one two points about uh, that i have uh, practice problems and i have made projects and i have a hackathon and all that thing i added then i added my resume link um, i initially didn't use to add my resume link and that also worked fine so it's not important to add your resume link they can ask you for resume if they want uh, then i added my resume link then the job id i have, um, added the job id also Uh, when i applied for google step i did this mistake that i didn't added the job id so i nobody referred me i wasn't aware that i need to add the job id i thought uh, writing google step would work but it didn't so you should write the job id as well and then uh, thank you for your time and all that regards you should mention and this would work i have applied with refill and all the time i asked for refill i use this template only okay so after the application you received the online assessment link na no? Yes, I received online. After how many link. days? Like after applying? Um, after around a month, more than a month, I received the online assessment link. And what was the pattern of the online yes. assessment? Like, was it only okay, DSA based so, or MCQ questions were also? Yes, it was only DSA based. They asked me two DSA problems. Uh, I. Uh, i took around 35 minutes to solve both of them the first problem was uh, not very difficult it was easy problem and I, that problem was very solvable i i required only 5 6 minutes to solve that the other problem they asked was uh, that wasn't that difficult but it uh, took most of my time to solve it was a medium level problem it in involved dp uh, as far as i remember um i'm maybe wrong uh, it was very uh, before so yeah it most probably it involved dp Okay, so they ask only two or three DSA questions in the online assessment. Yes, yes, they ask only two problems. And after clearing the online assessment, how many days? Uh, like after how many days you receive the interview link? More than a month, a month or so. Okay, so the process was very slow, very slow. But yeah, it's a off-campus opportunity now. Yeah. So, like uh, after getting shortlisted in the OE, getting the interview link, how you prepared for the interviews and what was your interview experience? How many rounds were there and what they asked like CS, DBM, CS fundamentals, DBM, SOPS, or only DSA? And did they ask your projects also? How was your experience? Okay, so my I got my interview invitation link. and on 11th of october and my interview was scheduled on 23rd of october so i had a lot lot of time but in between for a week i had my midsem exams so i had to prepare along with my midsems as well so i didn't pay much attention to my midsem uh, i paid most of my attention because i wasn't um, i had prepared for google interviews so i had good command over dsa but where i had didn't had any command was Four subjects. I, I had studied code DBMS in my third semester, 
um, oops in my second semester but oops so i know but dbms i lost touch and uh, os I, i was taught in fifth semester so but yeah as college uh, didn't teach you the way we need to be taught so i had to um, i used the love bubbles videos that one shot videos i used to watch those videos and i used to watch those videos um, and make notes and stuff to prepare for the core subjects because i i was a bit confident that i would be able to do the dsa problems because google ask uh, ask a bit diffi- difficult questions microsoft doesn't have that difficult dsa problems they focus on many things so i wanted to prepare for core subjects and my projects uh, i i didn't have much time i had a few uh, two three hours i give, have given to my projects as well to no more of problem projects and for dsa i have only given one day for the entire week i did uh, uh, core subjects operating system i have written every code uh, i have practiced all the codes uh, for dbms also i did uh, all the normalization and everything so operating system took most of my time because a few seniors of mine said the operating system would be their main main focus and they may they might ask you to code as well and uh, oops i didn't had much fo- uh, i didn't give much focus to that but yeah that was also very important so th- this way i prepared for my uh, interviews i have given one day or something for dsa as well i just revised dsa and i didn't much code it i just revised all the dsa stuff and on the 23rd uh, i had my interviews um in my first interview uh, there were two technical interviews in my first interview i was asked two dsa problems and a few uh, core subject problems um, the the first question uh, um, uh, was a bit array problem i used recursion to solve and then they asked me to optimize it further so i used uh, a few uh, i um, made some logics and uh, solved that question using those logics because recursion wasn't the optimized uh, solution for that so uh, I, this was the first question second question involved stacks and queues so i used uh, second problem so i was able to solve in 5 6 minutes only first question took a lot of time as Uh, i had to code both the ways and yeah and 5 7 minutes 7 uh, 8 minutes they asked me uh, a few core subject problems that was from oops they didn't ask me any operating system question and they didn't even ask me to code anything they just asked me a few uh, oops question and dbms question and in my second interview i after my first interview after half an hour or something i received a call that i will have my second interview in 10 minutes so Uh, in my second interview, uh, for the first 35 minutes, I was also about my projects. So I had three projects, and for uh, this, the real estate website, uh, for that they asked me for la- around 30 minutes. For the other two projects, they asked me for five minutes about how was the project and how did you work. For the, uh, that project, I was asked 30 minutes. I was asked the tech stack. Uh, actually, I had I uh, I've written in my technical skills that I know next as well. So they asked me why didn't you use next. what is the difference between react and next they asked me all these questions uh, how did the environment of mon works and why didn't node next worked with it and I, i have made a project with next as well and they saw that on my github and they asked me about that as well a bit that why did you use next there and not here all that questions uh, they also asked me about the authorization part how did i uh, did that they asked me how did i uh, implemented socket.io and stuff uh, so uh, they asked me about the problems i faced and the problem uh, the project that um, they asked me about uh, the uh, real uh, real estate website uh, it took me around 7 8 10 days around to make and it involved a lot of blunders so i was i explained everything what i faced while making the project so i think the, he was very impressed about how i explained uh, the project stuff uh, he also asked me to uh, code up the syntax of how do i connect mongodb with node which i wasn't much aware of i had used that but i wasn't much aware of so i just have written the code it wasn't fully correct but the syntax was quite similar to what it actually is and um, after this uh, this uh, project discussion uh, for 35 minutes uh, he asked me a few hr questions which took around 7 8 minutes a few hr questions my strength weaknesses what made me stand out um, and all those questions um then he asked me um a 1 dsa problem this dsa problem was not that difficult but it took me a lot of time to solve because it had a lot of edge cases and it was uh, getting stuck on one edge case all the time uh, but the way i solved it he was quite impressed and, and in the end of my interview he also uh, told me that he wants to ask me another question but uh, because of the time constraint he couldn't uh, 
um, the uh, DSA problem, um, when I was solving it, didn't feel like an interview. It, it seemed that I, I'm just having a discussion with a senior from Microsoft in order to how to solve this question. Both the interviewers were quite uh, friendly and um, yeah. So this was my interview experience. So after the second interview, you received the selection email. Yeah, after two days, uh, on 25th of October, I received the selection email. And after one, two weeks, I received the offer letter. So what is your location, Hyderabad or Bangalore? Yeah, my location is Hyderabad uh, now. It might change, but it's Hyderabad as of now. OK, so now coming to some rapid fire questions. First is, okay. uh, is CP necessary nowadays for clearing the online assessment or not? I think CP uh, gives you an edge in interviews and OS both. I didn't do much CP, uh, but I think uh, CP is not mandatory also, but I think doing CP is always good. Yeah. OK, so the second one is, adding unique projects in the resume gives you an edge or not in off-campus opportunities. Like some people add just a clone from the YouTube, copy paste and add. And some people like code themselves, do every code element, add elements themselves, and then put the project in the resume. So what is your opinion in putting the level of projects? Um, I think, uh, as I mentioned in my second interview, I, I was asked for like 30 minutes for a project. I think uh, my second interview went for like one hour, 20 minutes. That interview would have shrunk to 50 minutes, uh, the traditional 50 minutes interview only. If I hadn't had a, a unique project, I think uh, you should uh, uh, make your projects by your own. And having a, uh, my project wasn't that unique. I just added an extra functionality that, that, that made it unique. So I think adding unique projects is, uh, always a plus point although it's not that important you can also if you're lucky you can go around with a clone as well but i think it 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 could be it could give you an edge the next one is getting the resume reviewed by the seniors and increasing the ats score because most of the people say ats score helps in getting like shortlisted but some mm, people also say like ats score is not uh, considered the recruiter see the resume themselves so what is your point of mm. view like getting the resume reviewed and increasing the ATS score helps or not um, personally I think ATS score does matter I think so and I think I have given a lot of uh, my attention on how to increase my ATS score so I think ATS score is important also I had uh, reviewed my resume from a lot of people a lot of people were not even known to me I just got them from Codis Cafe and I just um, messaged them that please review my uh, resume. I think resume review is an important thing. It's the first round you might get uh, dis uh, rejected from there as well. So I think uh, it's important. So the last question is, um, are mock interviews helpful for the final interviews or not? Yes, it is. It is help helpful. Um, I remember I have given only one mock interview uh, before my Google uh, interviews. Uh, I've only given one mock interview. Uh, it, I had given my mock interview to you only. Uh, I wasn't able to give mock interview during the Microsoft time. I wanted to give, but I couldn't because uh, I had my medicines in between and there was a lot of pressure. I didn't want to give my makeup exams because I thought I should finish it the hair itself. Uh, so I had a lot to do, so I didn't give mock interviews, but I, I wanted to give mock interview. I think giving mock interviews um, gives you a lot of confidence, helps you. Uh, Getting rejected from my Google interview, I had a list of what did all I did wrong, where all I went wrong. So, um, giving interviews give you confidence, gives you all the points where you were uh, not very good with, and you should uh, improve those points. So, uh, mock mock interviews, so I think, are really helpful. Okay, Anvesha, this was from my side. Anything else you want to tell to the juniors? Um, I would just say that don't get disheartened if people around you are more aware of the stuff. Um, just work hard, be consistent. Okay, so I th uh, I think uh, doing DSA consistently would help. Um, and uh, also I would say CP is important. If you could do CP, please do it. Uh, it would give you a lot of edge in interviews and uh, always a lot.